Namaste and welcome back to the video course on watershed management. Today in module number 10, lecture number 40, the last lecture we will discuss about water reclamation and reuse. So, some of the topics covered today include reclaimed water, reclamation processes, reuse of water, then summary of the course. So, keywords for today's lecture include water reclamation and water reuse. So, as we, we are discussing in the last two lectures, water conservation, water recycling and water reuse is very important aspects as far as water saving is concerned or wherever water scarcity is there, the, the way which we can uh, go ahead is conserve the water, use very effective way the water or most efficient use of water and then uh, recycle or reclaim the, the used water and further reuse. So, that should be the way we can uh, say go ahead with the available limited resources, so that uh, we can have the best utilization of the water. So, when we look into the, the reclaimed water, so reclaimed water or recycled water as we were discussing in the last lecture. So, it is former waste water, so treated to remove solids and certain impurities and used in sustainable landscaping, irrigation or to recharge groundwater aquifers. So, as we are discussing in the last lecture, we can use this reclaimed water or recycled water say mainly for non portable purposes say such as uh, say irrigation purpose or the some uh, industrial purposes or some domestic purposes like uh, say flushing toilets like that or say some of the type of uh, portable use, but through maybe by recharging to the to the aquifer systems uh, as groundwater recharge or we can say send this uh, purified water reclaimed water to the, the surface water sources which we can further utilize. So, we can mainly use the reclaimed water for non portable purposes, but sometimes if the water scarcity is there, we can further use the, the reclaimed water for. Uh, say portable purposes also through groundwater recharge and other ways. So, that way when we look into the reclaimed water, the main purpose is sustainability and water conservation rather than discharging the treated water to surface waters such as rivers and oceans. So, as uh, we know that the, the, the waste water treatment without treating many, many locations as we were discussing some of the lectures also earlier. So, water quality is a problem, so water pollution is a major problem. So, especially industrial or the municipal corp municipalities when they uh, send the waste water without treat with, without appropriate treatment to the surface water sources like lakes, rivers or to the sea, then the existing uh, say natural water will get further polluted and this waste water uh, disposal is a, a major issue. So, that way when we look into water reclamation or the water recycling and then reuse, we can see that um, say we are trying to conserve the water and then uh, further as far as water as a resource is concerned, uh, say it become more sustainable and then uh, say uh, we can see that the amount of waste water say if we are reclaiming the waste water uh, through recycling, then the amount of uh, waste water to be, to be treated or to be sent to the uh, uh, surface water source like rivers, lakes or the sea become uh, reduced. So, that way uh, we, we are getting uh, environmental benefits also. So, that way it is uh, economical also. So, when we look into reclaimed water, we can see that end product of waste water reclamation meets water quality requirements for uh, biodegradable materials, suspended matter and pathogens. So, uh, so that uh, say uh, uh, the users such as agriculture uh, and the industrial users uh, we can meet with respect to the uh, reclaimed water. So, when we look into the reclaimed water, uh, we have to see that as I as we were discussing the last lecture also, uh, we have to see what is the, the use, what is the intended purpose or the use uh, using that um, reclaimed water and then uh, what is the source of that uh, the, the waste water coming from, say whether it is coming from domestic sources or industrial sources, how much treatment to be given. So, we have to work out say what kind of uh, treatment to be given and what uh, re what type of reuse will be uh, possible. So, ac accordingly uh, we have to so see the, the, the uh, type of use, type of uh, reuse as far as the, the, the waste water is uh, concerned. 
So, now when we look into the, the reclaimed water, say for maximum water use or reclamation or recovery. So, uh, we have to uh, say select appropriate strategies. So, strategies such as uh, water pinch analysis. So, water pinch analysis is an analysis uh, which is uh, um, done in many countries. So, it is actually a systematic technique for reducing the water consumption and uh, waste water generation through integration of water using activities or processes. So, this water pinch analysis is a scientific method say, so that we can uh, identify how much uh, water is to be reclaimed claimed or how much uh, water is coming as waste water and then how we can uh, say uh, go for systematic uh, technique of reducing the waste the water consumption and the waste water uh, generation. Uh, so, uh, this this kind of analysis like water pinch analysis uh, helps uh, uh, a user to target the minimum uh, fresh water usage and uh, uh, the waste water target. So, uh, water pinch analysis is uh, important as far as when we look into water conservation and then uh, so waste water generation, waste water treatment uh, with respect to all these uh, things. So, that way uh, this kinds of analysis helps to uh, helps in designing the network that achieves the target. So, the target is the, the, the efficient uh, usage of available water. So, that we, uh, we want to use the less water as far as the consumption is concerned, so that waste water generated will be also less and then uh, that way uh, we can conserve the water and then uh, we can choose appropriate methodology for reclaiming or recycling or reuse. Uh, so, as far as the cost of reclaimed water say when it exceeds that of potable water, uh, so in many regions of the world. So, we can see that um, say most of this waste water when we, when we have to give appropriate treatments. Uh, that will suit say to the standard of potable water, then we have to go through say uh, not only primary or secondary, but tertiary treatment um, and then uh, uh, say um, uh, nano filtration or the reverse osmosis that kinds of um, processes as we discussed in the last lecture we have to give and then the, the cost of the, 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 the reclaimed water uh, go up. So, that way we can see that um, uh, in many locations, so the, the, the cost of reclaimed water may exceeds the available uh, na natural pot 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 potable water. So, so that way uh, uh, we can see that the, the when we use the reclaimed water for non-potable uses, so uh, say if we can use this um, reclaimed water for non-potable uses like industrial or domestic purposes or agricultural purposes, we can save the potable water for drinking and uh, so that way uh, uh, say the, the whatever we have to use for other purposes, the potable water which we are using that can be reduced. Uh, by using the reclaimed water. So, that way we can save the water uh, uh, and then usage of water reclamation decreases uh, the pollution sent to the sensitive environment. So, as we, we are discussing, so when we are uh, reclaiming or recycling the waste water, so actually the, the, the amount of uh, waste water to be treated uh, and to uh, say before the before disposing to the to these surface water sources like uh, rivers or the ocean. Uh, so, that way the amount is reduced and then um, uh, when we are reclaiming the water. So, that way uh, uh, also we can uh, say um, benefit. Uh, so, uh, so, that way we can see that when the usage of water reclamation decreases, uh, usage of uh, the, the, that decreases the pollution of the polluted water sent to the, the environment. So, that way uh, uh, say it is uh, as far as the waste, waste water reclamation is concerned, uh, say when we are uh, uh, using that way we are saving plus the amount of waste water we are reducing. So, that way also uh, we can uh, say, but uh, say if portable water is available as a cheap source, then we can see that uh, while going through this kinds of reclamation or recycling and uh, the cost may exceed. Um, um, but anyway, when we look into industry processes or urban areas or cities, we can see that um, uh, this recycling is a good option or reuse, reuse uh, of the reclaimed water is a uh, good option as we were discussing in the uh, last lecture. So, when we, we uh, try to reuse the reclaimed water, number of concerns are there about um, say whether it is uh, whether we are going for non-portable purpose or portable purpose. So, we have to uh, see all these concerns. So, let us look into what are the important concerns when we look into reclaimed water and its reuse. 
So, reclaimed water is highly engineered for safety and reliability, so that the quality of reclaimed water is more predictable than many existing surface and ground water sources. So, we say the water recycling or water reclamation process. So, it is a systematic process through which uh, uh, say uh, we have to send the waste water through uh, various stages and then we can see that um, uh, say we can predict what will be the quality of the, the, the reclaimed water which we, we have to reuse for various purposes. So, that way uh, say this reclaimed water is a highly engineered water. Uh, so, uh, that may be sometimes uh, more pure than the natural water available from the existing surface sources or ground water sources. Uh, so, that way uh, we can see that when reclaimed water is safe when appropriately used. So, as I mentioned we have to see the, the intended use of the uh, reuse of the waste water uh, and then uh, uh, we have to give appropriate treatments accordingly. So, reclaimed water uh, say planned for use in recharging aquifers or augmenting surface water uh, receives adequate and reliable treatment before mixing with uh, natural water and undergoing natural restoration processes. So, uh, especially uh, if you are planning to use this reclaimed water say uh, for portable purposes or recharging to the the aquifer systems or to the when we are discharging to the natural source of water like rivers or lakes, uh, we should be very careful and then um, we have to see that uh, it meets the, the required standards and then um, reliable treatment is given uh, before mixing uh, this reclaimed water. And then uh, some of this water eventually becomes part of drinking water supplies. So, we can see that um, say especially say let us assume that uh, there is a, a long river and then number of cities are there uh, say uh, at different parts of the river. So, then we can see that most of the time what happens say the cities on the upstream sides say they uh, take the water from the river and then use it and then after treatment they put back the effluents to the river again. And then the downstream sides again cities will be there and and then they are, they are again drawing this water for uh, their purposes. So, that way we can see that the, uh, the, the, uh, the water say uh, in many of the, the water supplies of many cities especially on uh, the river sides we can see that they are using the reusing the water. Uh, so, the water used by one city um, uh, will be again reused by another city on, on the downstream side. So, uh, that way when we look into reclaimed water it is often uh, distributed um, uh, say or it is we have to take care when we look into uh, this kinds of say uh, uh, the affluence what is coming to, to the natural systems. And then uh, say in a, in, a, in a township or in an area when we are um, trying to reuse the uh, reclaimed water it is often um, instead of mixing this um, uh, say if you are directly uh, going to utilize the reclaimed water it is always better to uh, have a dual piping system piping network. So, that uh, the intended purpose of this reclaimed water say for example, if it is for irrigation or if it is for um, say um, uh, flushing systems. So, like that it is always better to send this uh, reclaimed water through a dual piping uh, is a especially if you are directly going to utilize the uh, reclaimed water. So, that this um, the, the reclaimed water pipes completely separate from the uh, portable water pipe pipes. So, the user should not get confused with the, the portable water pipes and the reclaimed water pipes. So, that we should have a dual piping systems uh, network and then uh, the, the, the consumer should know which is the reclaimed water and which is the uh, portable water. So, like that. Uh, so, then uh, say now let us look into what are the reclamation processes. So, uh, in the last lecture also we were discussing about the water recycling. So, we were discussing various processes we have dis uh, discussed uh, in detail about these processes. So, um, anyway we will have quickly go through uh, say some of the important processes where the water reclamation or water recycling uh, which uh, we have discussed in the last lecture also. So, as I as we discussed in the last lecture. So, first one is say once we collect the uh, waste water. So, we have to give some preliminary treatments like um, uh, we, we can send this um, collected uh, water through bar screen uh, so that the solids can be removed. Then the next stage is um, primary treatments uh, like uh, we can have settling tanks so that um, the readily settleable and floatable solids are removed from the waste water. And then uh, sometimes we can use some type of biological treatment. So, using microorganisms, bacteria which digest the sludge 
and reduce the nutrient content in the waste water. Uh, and then uh, say we can uh, have the secondary kind of treatments like settling tanks and trickling filter and all those things what we are discussing uh, in the in the uh, last lecture. So, here uh, in, the, in the secondary treatment microorganisms to settle to the bottom uh, other small particles uh, suspended in the water are picked up uh, leaving the behind the clear waste water. So, uh, many of the agriculture purposes we can use the uh, reclaimed water from the secondary treatment we can directly go for reuse and also some of the industrial process directly we can utilize after the secondary treatment. And then if you want more um, purified form of the water say reclaimed water then we have to go for the various tertiary treatment which we discussed in the last lecture uh, like uh, deep bed, the single media, gravity sand filters um, and then receive water from the secondary basins and filter out the remaining solids and then uh, we can sense the the uh, what the, the reclaimed water through uh, say for, say like filters like um, uh, ultra filters and filtration nano filtration or say reverse osmosis so that uh, the most pure, uh, say purified form of the reclaimed water is obtained so like that whatever they depending depending upon the intended use uh, say after secondary treatment or tertiary treatments uh, we can uh, directly reuse the reclaimed wa water and then especially if you are going for say potable or other kinds of uses then disinfection is also required like um, we can uh, uh, mix the, the, the water after the tertiary treatment with um, chlorine contact tanks the, within the chlorine contact and then uh, uh, that way we can disinfect also the, the reclaimed water. So, that way uh, we can directly uh, say uh, reuse the water uh, say uh, even sometimes portable purposes if the sufficient portable water is not available uh, in the considered area. So, now uh, let us look into the, the say with respect to we are discussing about the reclaimed water its processes and now let us look into the concepts of reuse of water. So, uh, we were discussing the recycling and then uh, reuse. So, uh, where we can reuse the particular type of water and then uh, um, uh, uh, how uh, we can uh, reuse. So, the concept of reuse of water. So, as we are discussing reuse is most applicable where large volumes of water are reused and waste are not to uh, uh, waste water is not to contaminated. So, uh, say the water coming from say especially say like uh, cooling processes. So, the water is not much uh, uh, say uh, contaminated. So, that way we can directly uh, reuse it or say if the, if the waste the waste uh, the contamination in the water is say much much less say through after say washing or some of the processes the, then uh, reuse is uh, most applicable. Uh, and then uh, location of treatment plant and possible transport of uh, renovated water. So, these are some of the important consideration when we look into the, um, the, the, the concept of uh, reuse of water. So, we have to see that uh, say we collect all the all the waste water and then um, give appropriate treatments and then um, we have to see that um, uh, say, uh, say it is sent to or transported uh, the renovated water to uh, appropriate uh, locations for uh, reuse. Uh, so, now uh, other concerns like um, um, the treatment processes. So, as we are discussing earlier, so what kind of what type of intended use. So, accordingly we will be giving uh, say primary, secondary or tertiary type of treatment or the modern treatments. So, uh, but uh, we have to see that uh, the economics also. So, the co the benefit cost analysis we have to do and then um, we have to see that benefit uh, say the whatever we are spending the, it is beneficial. So, efficient and economical when flow is steady. So, especially treatment processes. So, if the, the say we have to see that sufficient uh, waste water is keep on coming as a source of waste water when we are sending this waste water for treatment through the treatment plant for reuse purposes so that a uh, steady flow should takes place. Uh, but we can see that especially say wherever we go for this kinds of water reclamation or uh, waste water recycling. So, uh, most of the urban areas is, is uh, the flow will be regular. So, when uh, say especially for domestic um, uh, sector is concerned we can see that more water is used in the morning hours and in the evening hours. So, uh, in between or in the night time we can see that uh, there will not be uh, regular supply. So, that kind of uh, uh, problems are there. 
and then now uh, say as far as waste water reclamation is concerned then uh, we have to give appropriate treatment or processing uh, before making it uh, reusable. So, this issue we have already discussed in the last lecture. Uh, then um, water reuse is concerned, so uh, we have to see the use of uh, treated waste water for beneficial use. So, say for example, say after secondary treatment say for the, the waste water um, say, uh, uh, say good amount of nutrients will be present within the, the, the secondary treated water waste water. So, that will be maybe more beneficial for agricultural or irrigation uh, since the plants get um, uh, say nutrients from this um, water source. Uh, so, like that we have to see the beneficial use as far as the, the, uh, the water reuse or the waste water reuse is uh, concerned. Uh, now, say as far as the, the reuse is concerned, we can have either direct waste water reuse or indirect reuse. So, direct waste water reuse requires pipes or other conveyance facilities for delivering the reclaimed water. So, most of the time uh, we need the, the uh, dual uh, um, uh, say, uh, system where the reclaimed water another uh, piping system through which we can send this uh, reclaimed water. So, that is for direct waste water use, reuse. So, that may be for irrigation or agriculture or flushing or maybe uh, some of the industrial processes. Now, uh, second one is the indirect use. So, indirect use say here uh, we are discharging the effluent to receiving water for assimilation and withdrawals um, uh, downstream. So, uh, indirect use uh, means say for example, say as I, as, as I mentioned earlier, say if, if uh, say if two, two or three cities are there uh, different location on the sides of a river, then we can see that uh, upstream city. Uh, so, that what will be withdrawing the, the, the water and then after their use say uh, after treatment the waste water as effluent will be coming back to the river and then through natural process processes this water will become again reusable for the next city. So, like that uh, indirect uh, um, uh, use takes place and also say if you are recharging the, the treated water uh, to the aquifer systems. So, then again that water will be pumping back for the direct uh, say other use. So, that way we can say that uh, there is indirect use. Then uh, say industries like pulp and paper industries say water reuse is um, uh, predominantly practiced. So, um, through uh, various processes from one process to another processes the, the effluent coming from they give uh, some kinds of treatments and then again they reuse for the, the other uh, process. Uh, so, like that uh, say especially pulp uh, industries, textile industry, paper industries say uh, this reuse is uh, very common. And then as far as domestic reuse is concerned, so best recycle opportunity, but the amount of water recycled falls short of the total amount of um, water reused. So, domestic reuse is concerned wherever water stress or water scarcity is there, we can keep on uh, reuse, um, but the, of course, there will be some shortage since uh, the consumption or other purposes say some water will be lost in between. So, um, uh, say we have to see the uh, best recycle opportunity as far as domestic uh, reuse is concerned. And then warm and dry areas. Uh, say the, the reuse is suitable for domestic reuse where, where there is a large difference between supplied water and waste water uh, due to losses. So, especially warm and dry areas we can see that uh, evaporation and other losses will be much more. So, that when if the water sufficient natural water is not available, potable water is not available, we have to look into the, to the reuse um, concept. So, when we look into reuse, say uh, the concept of reuse is concerned, uh, say uh, uh, we can as we were discussing in the last two lectures, say uh, uh, as far as the water recycling, uh, say we can either uh, say use the rain water, the storm drainage water or the grey water which is not much polluted and then the sewage water. So, these uh, four categories of uh, uh, water is available for reuse. Uh, so, actually the First uh, two categories say uh, less risk and then preferred options say like rainwater use or the storm water uh, use. And then um, grey water or sewage uh, water is say, say high risk uh, and least preferred option especially for domestic purposes. 
and then uh, especially rain water and storm water they, they, the reuse advantage is that it is low energy requirement so no need of much treatment we can directly utilize um, but uh, as far as the sewage water or the the gray water is concerned we have to go for high energy uh, type requirement and then we have to go for various kinds of uh, treatment so that way uh, we have to see uh, what type of reuse we are looking for and from what source we are looking for the uh, reuse. Then uh, as far as reuse of water is concerned uh, uh, say with respect to the quality of water uh, same and the time sequence same so for example, unpolluted water we can directly use for drinking then uh, uh, same through uh, after some appropriate water treatments. And then uh, as far as the municipal uh, and industrial use is concerned uh, directly the waste water will be coming and then that waste water we can treat appropriately and then uh, water reclamation or recycling is possible and then further reuse is possible. And then uh, say after this waste water treatment uh, the treated effluent uh, and then we can reclaim the water and then uh, repurify and further uh, utilize. So, this is the uh, the quality changes of during municipal use of water and concept of waste water reclamation and reuse as given by Maghe in 2006. So, uh, when we look into water reclamation and uh, reuse, so water treatment uh, for drinking water say um, uh, we have to meet appropriate standards. So, as we are discussing um, say the pH range like this is 0 0.5 to 8 or the TDS requirements or the BOD or COD all these kinds of requirement we have to see especially if we are trying to uh, use the uh, reclaimed water for drinking purposes we have to go for strict uh, measures for quality uh, control. Uh, then uh, say especially if you want to reuse the municipal and industrial water, so that is will be much degraded water. Uh, so, the quality issues are there and we have to go for appropriate waste treatments. So, the treatment is carried out to the points required by the regulatory agencies. So, what kind of uh, treatment to be given uh, is especially for drinking or other purpose we have to see uh, as per the norms of the regulatory agencies for protection of uh, um, of other beneficial uses. So, here in this in this figure say when we look into this say the dashed line uh, in the figure represents increased quality for reuse and the concept of reclamation and reuse will come after the waste water reaches the uh, natural unpolluted uh, water. So, uh, if the, the reclaimed water if you are putting to natural unpolluted water then how uh, the, the, the effect all these aspects we have to study appropriately then only uh, we can uh, send this effluent to the, to the, the natural um, water sources from which if you are directly uh, say using the water for various purposes we have to see the uh, standards are kept as far as the, the reclaimed water uh, that will be mixing with the the other source of water. Uh, so, that way we have to see the, the repurified water I mean the water reclaimed and then again purified. Uh, so, this the water generated by further advanced waste water reclamation technologies say like um, carbon adsorption, advanced oxidation and reverse osmosis. So, uh, as we are discussing the last lecture say many of these advanced treatments the, the water become much more uh, purif purified form and generate much higher quality than the conventional drinking water what we are directly uh, taking from the rivers, lakes and other sources. So, the character of waste water entering in renovated um, plant uh, is important and especially industrial waste water is concerned we have to see uh, which way the treatment to be given and what kind of reuse we are looking for. Uh, say as example for example ordinary salt brines uh, and then uh, these undesirable for if the renovated to be demineralized say if the UCs uh, not the water should not have much mineralized this thing say if the water uh, say if you are going to reclaim from the, the salt brines and then um, uh, say if you have to remove all the, the salt content from the reclaimed water then it will be much more uh, uh, expensive and then uh, uh, so that way we have to see the the cause of the, the reclaimed uh, water. 
so when we look into reuse of uh, water then uh, various uh, schemes uh, we can see that to uh, say the reuse from the various sources. So, as we are discussing the source we have to see like um, rain water drainage system, uh, sewer systems etcetera. Then uh, the, the particular schemes we have to adopt depends upon the intended reuse uh, as we discussed earlier and the reuse of um, uh, waste water is concerned uh, say when we are looking to the reuse of waste water we have to see the source of waste water whether it is coming from the domestic source industrial source whether it is um, um, uh, say um, the, the whether it is highly contaminated or whether it is only uh, say uh, only some tedious or so small kinds of uh, type of pollutions uh, are there. So, we have to do appropriate survey of the, the sewer system for finding waste water availability for reuse. So, when we look into the, the, the reclamation water waste water reclamation and reuse. So, uh, say in a particular area uh, we have to study the, the system, we have to study the quality of the, the waste water coming. So, we have to collect the samples from the various sewer systems and then uh, say uh, we have to identify the parameters uh, within that waste water. So, before going for appropriate uh, treatments that is to be given for the uh, waste water. So, highly contaminated um, waste water with uh, metals or containing high total concentration of dissolved solids. Generally, uh, these are unacceptable for most of the uses, uh, especially domestic or industrial purpose are concerned. Then deliberate use of treated waste water in planned way is important say as we are discussing some of the case studies like um, the, the Rashtriya chemical fertilizers um, Mumbai uh, in Chembur plant say they, 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 are, they, are, they are deliberately using the, the treated waste water for their industry processes. So, uh, so that way uh, they know the quality of the waste water and then accordingly they have put a system of uh, treatment uh, as far as the, the reuse uh, scheme is concerned. So, that way when we look into the reuse schemes, water use schemes, um, we have to study the, the sewage water the, the, uh, at various locations like main sewer, then uh, the main sewer may be uh, the waste water may be coming from uh, the domestic sources or industrial sources after treatments, then um, uh, say um, uh, sometime we can directly say if not much polluted we can directly put into um, the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, then uh, we have to after the treatment we have to send that water for reuse and then from the treatment plant say the, the sludge is returned back to the main sewer uh, which will be again further uh, mixed with uh, other highly highly uh, polluted uh, waste water say like uh, which is not suitable for reuse and then all this mixer will be sent to further uh, um, say uh, sewage treatments uh, and then uh, the, the treated effluent will be sent to the natural sources like uh, rivers, um, uh, lakes or uh, oceans. So, that way when we look into the water reuse schemes, uh, we have to study the, the various uh, aspects like the, the quality of the waste water from where we are taking the waste water and what kind of treatment to be given and then what will be the intended uh, reuse. So, like that uh, we have to plan the uh, reuse schemes. So, when we look into reuse schemes say uh, we can see as I mentioned it can be unplanned reuse schemes or the planned reuse schemes. So, unplanned reuse schemes as I mentioned earlier cities draw water supplies from rivers that receive waste water upstream and then uh, water from these rivers uh, are reused, uh, treated and piped into the water supply a number of times before the last downstream user say last city with withdraw the uh, water. So, that way uh, so the especially on the banks of the rivers same uh, long rivers we can see that a number of cities will be there on both sides. So, that way we can see that um, uh, these are all unplanned. So, so the cities are developing and then they need water and then that way uh, say we cannot uh, plan uh, say in advance. So, this has, this is called unplanned scheme. Uh, reuse schemes. So, then planned scheme is say especially for industries concerns or particular localities concerns um, say uh, 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 we can identify the, the quality of the waste water and then we can go for appropriate treatments and then beneficially uh, reuse the, uh, the recycled water. 
so that way the water reuse may be for uh, say uh, then accordingly whether it is unplanned or planned we have to see the, the intended use uh, especially the planned use uh, may be for agriculture purposes or industrial or domestic purposes. So, especially for ag agriculture purposes are concerned for agriculture reuse uh, say we may have to go, go for primary, pre primary and secondary treatments uh, as we discussed in the last lecture. Uh, uh, then um, uh, industrial or domestic purposes are concerned uh, we may have to go for tertiary treatment also uh, and then to remove the more necessary pollutants especially the dissolved and re refractory substances and microorganisms depending on the, uh, the, the intended uh, use as far as the reuse is concerned. So, that way when we look into the, the reuse schemes where whether it can be a pl unplanned reuse scheme or the, the planned reuse uh, scheme. So, accordingly uh, we have to go for the, the, the treatment and the uh, reuse. So, now let us look into the different types of wastewater reuse. So, uh, the reuse of urban wastewater in agriculture and horticulture from severed areas. So, as we were discussing earlier, we can give some uh, uh, primary or secondary treatment and then directly we can uh, reuse it. And then reuse of urban wastewater from polluted nullas uh, draining unsevered areas. So, there the, the, the wastewater will be much more polluted and then uh, we may have to give more treatments uh, depending upon the intended use. And then uh, reuse in industrial and commercial establishments to meet the water shortage. So, as we are discussing some of the case studies earlier, uh, we have to, we can even uh, collect the waste water and then send to appropriate treatment plants. Um, uh, so, that um, the, the concerned industry get sufficient water through this process of um, re water reclamation and uh, reuse. Uh, so, that way say nowadays we can see that um, uh, many of the industries are looking for zero discharge. So, whatever the water they are using they are keep on reusing through reclamation various reclamation process finally, uh, there will be only sludge will be um, uh, sent for further uh, waste treatment otherwise uh, say we, the most of the, some of the industries can achieve the zero discharge. So, now say as a part of um, uh, environmental sustainability uh, the, 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 ma the major motto of the most of the industries is to achieve the, the zero discharge level. And as far as reuse is concerned for major urban and uh, community development purposes say we can uh, uh, say we can use the wastewater say as example to augment the public water supply so um, like through recharge to the aquifer systems or after appropriate treatment we can put this uh, the the effluent I mean the wasted the treated waste water which is in a good form and we can I mean uh, as a good form of the water that can be sent to the, 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 the water sources like rivers, lakes and the aquifers systems. So, as far as reuse in industries are concerned, so uh, say some of the uh, typical strategies followed by the industries here I have listed. Uh, say first one is of course, most of the industries are looking for water conservation. So, most efficient use of the available water and then uh, reduce the, 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 the usage is concerned as we were discussing in one of the previous lecture. So, firstly practice as much conservation of water as possible. So, that is the uh, first aim of uh, the industries and then secondly recycle the fraction of waste water which is in relatively good condition and can be recycled back with a little or no treatment. Uh, so, that way uh, the industries can save lot of money since uh, if they have to buy again fresh water that will be uh, more expensive. So, if we if they can recycle some with uh, some treatment of the, the water. Uh, then uh, uh, that can be uh, with with little or no treatment that can be directly uh, utilized for other other uh, processes then thirdly uh, we can arrange for more reuse after some treatment to make the industries on wastewater fit for uh, reuse so the third third aspect in reuse in industries concerned they have to collect all the the effluent or the wastewater coming from various plants and then and they have to give appropriate treatments 
and reclaim the water and then uh, go for the uh, reuse. And then finally, as we discussed in some of the industrial plants like uh, RCF in Mumbai, if more reuse is needed, uh, get the external source of wa waste water say from the municipal corporations, um, uh, they can get the waste water, the municipal sewage can be obtained. Some of the industries in, in places like Mumbai and Chennai, they are doing this, they buy the uh, waste water from the municipal corporations and then they give appropriate treatments and then uh, that can be uh, reused. So, that way uh, the reuse in industry is concerned, first one is water conservation, second one is say the, re the recycle with um, water with, uh, with, with uh, relatively good condition without much treatment, third one is their own uh, uh, say uh, reclaimed water through appropriate treatment reuse, then lastly they can get the waste water from the municipal corporation and then uh, reuse. So, as far as the water reuse in India is concerned, we have discussed two cases in the last lecture. So, again here two more like examples uh, I have put here. So, uh, water reuse in India say first the Madras first example is Madras refineries and Madras fertilizers limited Chennai. So, Madras refineries is producing about 12, 12 million liters uh, per day. Um, of reusable water and then Madras fertilizer is producing about 16 million liters per day of the reusable water since 1991. So, through various processes they are treating this um, their own uh, waste water and then uh, they are recycling it and then reusing it. Here the Chennai met also uh, this industry is uh, say whatever the, uh, the uh, scarcity of water is there, they buy the waste water from the Chennai metro water board and then uh, the water board supply the uh, water after second treatment. Uh, so, about 120 milli uh, which has about 120 milligram BOD and uh, these industries get this water and give appropriate treatments uh, depending upon their, their uh, end use. So, like um, say they get the secondary treated waste water, then uh, they go for additional secondary biological treatments, then uh, like chemically uh, aided settling uh, plus pressurized filtration plus ammonia stripping, then uh, carbonation, clarification, then uh, uh, pressure filtration, uh, then chlorination, then sodium bisulfate dosing, then multimedia filtration, then uh, cartridge filtration then reverse osmosis and then uh, the permeate the water for uh, reuse. So, these kinds of um, say flow chart uh, is used for the, the their own waste water or the waste water obtained from the uh, Chennai metro water. So, that way uh, what I want to say is that uh, say uh, depending upon the intended use, uh, depending upon the quality of the waste water or the, the, the contents of the waste water, uh, we can have appropriate uh, treatment process and then um, uh, we can reuse that uh, uh, waste water. So, this is example 1 and in second example, uh, so here another um, Vadodara pilot plant in Gujarat. So, this plant uses highly polluted waste water from an effluent disposal channel into which several industries such as refineries, fertilizers, petrochemicals discharge their raw waste with a capacity of 3 million liters per day uh, fresh water. So, this plant actually uh, they are collecting the waste water which is coming for, taken from a Nala or a channel, uh, waste disposal channel and directly they are giving appropriate treatments uh, and uh, say the capacity is about 3 million liters per day. The plant shows that at least 75 percent of the waste water could be made uh, reusable uh, at an operating cost of rupees 36 per thousand liter. So, after doing all these treatments, it has shown that the cost is only about rupees 36 per thousand liters. So, the flow, chart, flow sheet adopted uh, in the plan include the following treatments like the collection of waste water, then uh, say they, it goes through a chemical feeds like lime, uh, polyacrylic or soda ash depending upon the water quality, then it will be sent to clarifiers. So, then clarification and then uh, some say SCL treatment is given and then it will be sent through pressure filtration and then uh, it will be sent through sodium biosulfate treatment and then uh, further cartridge filters either 
ultrafiltration or nanofiltration or reverse osmosis will be done and then um, to remove the carbon dioxide degasification is done uh, and then further the purified water is reused in the industry. So, uh, again here you can see that uh, this industry is concerned it is uh, not using their own waste water, but they are collecting the waste water from the external sources and then go through a series of treatments and then uh, that water is uh, uh, used in the uh, by the industry. So, that way we can see that um, uh, they are having uh, they do not need further fresh source of water, but uh, even the waste water uh, they are giving appropriate treatments and then uh, reusing uh, for the, the their intended use. So, that way we can see number of uh, cases of um, uh, water reclamation uh, and then reuse uh, in India and other parts of the world. So, as we discussed uh, earlier the water reclamation or water recycling is increasing say to, the, to a, uh, say a range of about 10 to 15 percent per annum and then uh, say the reuse is also for various purposes and with uh, ultra modern techniques. So, even the, the recycled water reclaimed water we can directly even supply for uh, drinking purposes. So, that way uh, finally, before concluding this part of the lecture let us look into the future water reuse. So, due to the water scarcity or the water stress as we can we have seen uh, earlier also water reuse is increasing. So, reuse uh, can be through recycling reclamation and that for in many cases have, have been found to be effective and very successful and the, the cost of the, the in initial investment to be done and that uh, many of the industries are getting back in 3 or 4 years of time. Um, so, especially uh, say this um, uh, the reclaimed water is mainly reused for non potable purposes like um, agriculture irrigation or industrial processes that is widely accepted and practiced uh, all over the world. And then uh, this percentage is increasing say to the range of 10 to 15 percent in many parts of the world. And then uh, uh, as we discussed in the last lecture more advanced technolo technologies are available for recycling and reclamation like um, uh, nano filtration then reverse osmosis. So, that way we can produce much uh, 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 better form of water purified form of water that we can even use for portable purposes. Uh, but of course, that may be more expensive. So, we have to see that uh, the intended use and then quality of the, 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 the contents of the waste water and then give appropriate uh, treatment. Uh, and also as we discussed uh, indirect portable reuse is possible. So, like um, instead of directly supplying for portable purpose or domestic purposes, we can um, put this treated water maybe after tertiary treatment to the to for recharging the aquifer systems or that um, treated water can be mixed with the fresh water sources like um, lakes and rivers and then uh, we can utilize. So, that is the indirect uh, portable reuse. Uh, so, that way we can see that um, as we discussed earlier recycling reclamation and reuse. So, it is more energy efficient uh, since uh, we, we the, the money we had to spend for uh, uh, say uh, treatment of the waste water before putting to the as an effluent to the natural sources. So, that we can save that way we can see that um, in many cases this will be more energy efficient. And then sustainable water management uh, we can achieve uh, say uh, through the, the uh, recycling uh, reclamation and reuse. Uh, so, especially when we look into watershed management in a sustainable development uh, uh, way, we have to look into the possibility of water recycling, water reclamation and water reuse. So, that is a very important aspect as far as watershed management is concerned. Uh, so, moreover now the public uh, the, the, the people participation is also essential for uh, recycling and reuse. So, that way the people should know the advantages, its limitations and then uh, uh, they should aware that uh, say where these kinds of the reclamation or recycling can be done and then uh, what are the intended use the, of the reclaimed water. So, like that. So, that way the future of um, water reuse is um, much bright and um, then more uh, places, more industries and more cities are going for water reuse, uh, water reclamation and uh, water reuse. So, uh, some of the references used for today's lecture here I have listed uh, as in the previous lecture also. So, these are the some of the important references used for today's lecture. Uh, 
uh, and uh, some of the tutorial questions with respect to the, the water recycling and re reclamation and reuse what we discussed just now. So, critically analyze and study the scope of water reuse in India. Uh, do the urban uh, water scarcity uh, can be reduced by re reuse of water and study and compare various case studies available on reuse and evaluate the benefits and costs. So, here this reference can be uh, a number of cases are given and also in websites uh, US EPA website and then also this website and then also uh, CSC uh, publications these details are available. Then few self evaluation assignment questions describe the importance of reuse of recycled re, uh, or reclaimed water. What are the important uh, reclamation processes? Uh, illustrate the water reuse schemes. Discuss uh, various um, issues related to water reuse in industries. Uh, then uh, what are the main concerns about the uh, reclaimed water? Uh, illustrate the concept of reuse of uh, water. Uh, describe the types of um, waste water reuse and which are the places where reuse is possible. So, all these questions can be answered uh, with respect to the lecture just now uh, say th this lecture. And now, as this is the last lecture as far as this uh, 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 say video course on watershed management is concerned, let us have a quick uh, look into the what we have covered. So, let us have a, um, a summary of the, the topics covered and then uh, let us uh, conclude this lecture. So, the summary of the course on uh, watershed management. So, here uh, say in the first lecture I have given the objective of objectives of this course and then the, the, the various modules which will be covered also given. So, as I mentioned uh, in the first lecture here uh, my main aim of, of this lecture is to introduce watershed management and establish its relevance and concepts as far as the, uh, the this watershed management is concerned. And this lecture presents the fundamental principles, theories, uh, modeling, analysis and applications. So, uh, if you go through all these 40 lectures, you can see that um, most of the, rele the, the relevant theories, principles, uh, modeling all these th things were covered in these 40 lectures. Then uh, the, the, the main aim of these lecture, lectures to where to demonstrate how these uh, fundamental principles theories are used in the field of watershed management. So, this uh, has been done by uh, showing um, uh, number of case studies uh, as you can see in these lectures. And uh, we have discussed the various aspects of watershed and its management. So, like um, uh, integrated watershed management approach, then um, river basin management approach. So, all these aspects were covered in these 40 lectures. So, as I mentioned, uh, there were 40 lectures in this video course presenting the concepts, theory, uh, applications and uh, various uh, case studies. Uh, so, uh, as, as I mentioned in the first lecture, the course, uh, the, the main purpose of the course is to discuss various aspects of watershed development and management. Uh, so, uh, we have to see uh, watershed as a, as a scientific area uh, where we can uh, effectively manage various resources like um, land, uh, water, forest, agriculture, agriculture, flora and fauna within that area. Uh, so, watershed management uh, as we have discussed in this lecture 40 lectures, uh, various aspects like a technological issues, social issues, ecological issues, environmental issues, um, uh, sustainability all these aspects um, we have to look into and all these things um, were covered uh, in this 40 lectures. So, the course focus was um, the technical aspects of uh, watershed management, then uh, perspectives on land and water management and then uh, analysis of uh, complex issues on uh, water management and on specific knowledge on issues of water management. Uh, and also uh, the use of modern techniques in watershed management um, uh, were elaborated uh, in various lectures uh, as far as these 40 lectures on um, watershed management uh, are concerned. Uh, so, the course module there, so actually the course has been divided into 10 modules. So, here the modules I, as I have shown in the first lecture also here again the 10 modules what we have covered in this 40 lectures. So, the first module was introduction and basic concepts 3 lectures were given. Uh, then second one was sustainable watershed approach and watershed management practices 4 lectures were given. Uh, then integrated watershed management 4 lectures were given. 
and then fourth one was watershed modeling uh, about seven lectures were given and then uh, social aspects of watershed management uh, that include three lectures and then use of modern techniques in watershed management that include five lectures uh, management of water quality so that module include four lectures then storm water and flood management that module include four lectures drought management and this module include three lectures and water conservation and recycling which was the last module and that also uh, have three module three lectures so that way this video course uh, have got 40 lectures and then all the aspects of uh, watershed management um, uh, have been covered in a uh, in a very systematic and comprehensive way so finally to conclude so here the main uh, aim what I, I was projecting was the importance of watershed management when we are looking for watershed management or when we are going to implement the watershed management perspectives so we have to go for appropriate planning appropriate um, uh, say management perspectives so as i mentioned in, in many of my lectures uh, we have to uh, approach uh, watershed as a in a holistic way it is not only uh, the resource like land uh, then uh, water or the minerals or the vegetation or all, all this but uh, we have to see that uh, everything the, the, not only the people in the area but the various resources we have to go in an integrated way and we should go for a holistic approach as far as watershed management is concerned so that way this course um, uh, the different aspects and different approaches have been elaborated um, in a systematic way and um, all aspects of watershed and related issues uh, were discussed in this 40 lectures uh, so uh, as far as the theoretical aspects of watershed is concerned i have covered the theoretical aspects in a the best possible way uh, within the the um, uh, the various modules which we we have i have shown in the in the the last slides uh, so, for each lectures a uh, number of case studies uh, were presented uh, so that way this will be very useful to the uh, students and teachers and the practitioners. Uh, then um, uh, tutorials were uh, given self evaluation questions, assignments, unsolved questions all these uh, are provided at the end of uh, each lecture. Uh, so, that way uh, this video course will be very useful um, for systematic study of the watershed management. Uh, say for a student or for a teacher or for a or for a practitioner or an NGO who are looking to uh, this uh, video course on uh, watershed management. So, finally, uh, say this course will be useful to the students on uh, say bachelor level, masters and PhD levels say uh, from civil engineering background, agriculture, geography, geology, resources, environmental engineering, humanities, management, etc. So, that way the, the say the syllabus required for each of these um, uh, specialization I have covered in most in, a, in, a, in an elaborated way as you can see the, the uh, topics given in each module. So, you can go through a module wise also you can at say, say uh, go through the lecture and then uh, get the various aspects for that particular module. So, the course will be also useful to teachers who are teaching the uh, subject either watershed management or water management or uh, say various issues related to water uh, as described in this 10 modules in this 10, 10 modules what we have what I have already shown in the uh, uh, on in this slide here. So, then um, say also this um, uh, this video course will be useful to NGOs, field engineers, practitioners, scientists policy and decision makers, government agencies and for all working uh, in the area of uh, watershed management. So, so that way I have planned this uh, video course. Uh, so, this 40 video lectures will be very useful to uh, those who are going to work in the area of watershed management or those who are want, want to study the, the topic on uh, various topic on uh, watershed management. So, before um, uh, closing this um, uh, video lecture, so I want to acknowledge uh, the following people uh, who were uh, helpful to me to, to make this video course possible. So, first I would like to acknowledge some of the possible reviewers of this uh, course, um, uh, Professor S. G. Joshi, Professor Anurum K. Singh, Professor V. R. Desai and uh, Dr. Vinod Kumar uh, um, say who agreed to uh, review uh, course videos, slides and materials. 
then uh, say many of my students have contributed um, uh, say uh, as far as the slide preparations are concerned. So, I would like to specifically mention some names like um, uh, Mr. Harshvin Nunna, uh, Ms. Vardini, then Dr. Meenal, and then uh, Mr. Anand Kulkarni, uh, then all my former M Tech and PhD students like uh, Dr. Bengal Riddhi, Dr. Shahapure, Dr. Gida, Dr. Sahu uh, and all others. Uh, so, many of the, the, the case studies um, uh, say which they have done for their masters and PhD uh, thesis I have included uh, in this uh, video course. So, I am very thankful to all these students. Then uh, I am very thankful to all the CD staff of IIT Bombay. So, the excellent recording and then uh, the excellent facilities um, and then also editing uh, which they have spent lot of time and they are very dedicated staff um, uh, say who have made this video in a very excellent form. I am very thankful to them. Without them of course, we, I cannot do anything as far as this video course is concerned. So, I am very, very thankful to them. And finally, I am thankful to my family, my wife, Dr. Dr. Manjush and my kids uh, Ipan Basil. Uh, so, I have uh, spent so much of time to prepare these lectures. So, for their moral supports, uh, I am very thankful to them. So, finally, with a big thank, uh, I am finishing this video course. Thank you very much.